Hey everybody, welcome. It's Brian from Witch Doctor. Thank you for joining us. Um, this segment is going to be about um, brass dimensions. I've been getting a lot of questions lately. Uh, you know, what, what brass dimensions are important? Um, what accounts for, you know, variations in weight, rim thickness? Um, lots, lots of different questions because, as you know, if you've been following along, uh, I have a lot of tests that look at different brass dimensions and how they impact precision and ballistics. And um, what I'm getting into is uh, looking at case head thickness. And so how thick that case head is. Um, it's a part of the brass down here. Um, one way of measuring that, and I've seen this before, people put plugs in the brass, fill it with water, weigh it out, and then get some sort of volumetric analysis of it. Um, I'm on the more practical side of things, so I don't really want to spend time <laughs> doing water tests and plugging things and having water all around. So um, what I've found out uh, through some uh, people who are on my Patreon page and are sort of sharing of information there, we have a really good robust community um, all sort of with the goal of seeking better knowledge and understanding, um, you know, of what, uh, you know, what, what's, what's helpful in terms of, you know, getting better precision, getting improved ballistics, things like that. So, uh, one person indicated, well, you can take a rod and stick it inside the brass piece and then measure. And so that's what I did is I took a set of calipers took the rod, zeroed it out, okay, stuck it inside the case, and then measured the, the thickness with the rod, okay. Um, and so for this particular one, you can see 1.835. What I'm doing is I'm rounding up that half a thousand. So for this particular one, I have it set at 0 0.184. And I've essentially took 50 pieces of Norma 6 PPC brass, a lot from um, several years ago, um, and I sorted by uh, case head thickness. And as you can see here, I have a range from 0.176 all the way to 0.184, and the brass clustered by a thousandths. Okay, and I did that using using just a standard stainless steel rod that has a flat top you know, flat size, and it fits right into the case, just barely. I mean, there's barely, if you have a donut in there, you can actually feel the donut when you uh, go into the case. Um, and simply measuring case head thickness that way. Um, another thing I've been measuring is rim thickness. So, you know, we've had uh, a series of tests done looking at rim thickness and how that impacts primer seating depth. Uh, and it definitely does. I mean, we found almost a perfect correlation between rim thickness and how deep the primer uh, is seated. Um, so that that's a factor too. Um, and then also weight of the case. I've done tests where I've weighed cases and I've shot them and I've found that the medium to heavy cases shoot great, but the super light ones on the end of the tail don't shoot as great. So um, at this point, what I do is when I weight sort brass, I sort them all out and then I just call out the cases that are lighter. Um, anyway, for this particular test, it really wasn't a test of precision or ballistics, although it's related because some of the things that I've done, weight sorting brass, um, I'm looking at uh, case head thickness right now, um, it interacts in some way. And so knowing, you know, well, what, what correlates with what with brass dimensions um, would be useful. Um, so anyway, we went ahead and measured four things. We measured the case head thickness, again, with the, the simple technique using the, the rod and the calipers. Uh, seems simple and practical, and frankly, doesn't take that long. Um, I think I was able to do that with all these cases in less than five minutes. Um, I started with 50 cases, but I ended up with 49 simply because one of the cases the rim is so thick it doesn't fit into a standard shell holder. So as you can see there, it just doesn't go in. So the rim thickness is too much. So what I'll do with this piece is I'll use it to get the Aztec code for the rest of these pieces. 
Um, and so what I do typically when I have a piece like this that's, you know, not useful, I'll just write Aztec. Okay, as my reminder to go ahead and use that to get my Aztec code for my amp annealer machine. Anyway, so um, then went ahead and measured rim thickness, again, using calipers. Okay, and I get a pretty reliable uh, readout of rim thickness doing that. Um, weighed them on my um, weight scale that measures um, two hundredths, uh, down to two hundredths of a grain. Um, and then also measured primer pocket depth. Okay, so grab my calipers and measured the primer pocket depth. Um, this particular piece is 0.123. So did that for all 49 cases, and then I input the data into a spreadsheet. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that data now. Okay, so I opened up an Excel spreadsheet, created a spreadsheet with all the values. So measured case head thickness for all the cases, all 49. Went ahead and entered all those. Okay. Um, also, same thing with weight. Weight them on the scale. Entered that. And so um, each piece of brass is organized by row. So for this piece of brass, it had a case thickness of 0.176. It had a weight of 106.64 and a primer pocket depth of 0.1215 and a rim thickness of 0.055. And these are in uh, inches. So we did that for all 49. Okay. So there you go. We have the data for all 49. And then I did a summary, uh, summarizing all the sort of statistics. And what I found was um, for case head thickness for all 49, the average was 0.1799. Very small standard deviation, 0.0003. Um, I had a minimum, uh, uh, smallest one was 0.176 in diameter, in, in, uh, in height, and then maximum was 0.184, and so a range of 8 thousandths of an inch. With weight, my average was 107.34, and a low standard deviation, 0 0.07, and this, the lightest one was 106.56 grain, the maximum, the heaviest one was 108.42 uh, grain, and that had a range of 1.86 grain. Uh, primer pocket depths varied a little bit, um, but on average was 0.1226, very small standard deviation again, minimum of 0 0.1205, maximum of 0 0.125, and only had one that was at one point, uh, that it was at 0.125, and the range there was four and a half thousandths. Uh, rim thickness averaged to 0 0.0523, small standard deviation, the thinnest rim was 0 0.047, the thickest was 0 0.056, and that's a range of nine thousandths. Okay, um, so that's that's a lot of variation. And frankly, you know, to be honest with you, this is a lot of brass that uh, is probably five six years old. I had used it before, and I had known that there was a lot of variability in this lot, so um, I kind of just you know <laughs> kept it in storage, didn't really use it much <coughs> until. Until now, now I have a reason for it to use it for testing. So, um, because it gets this wide variation, it, it'll inform me of you know better on how, how these variations um, relate to each other. So um, that's what I ended up doing. I ended up uh, using a correlation technique to see what variables correlate with each other here, and what I found was weight correlated with case head thickness and rim thickness. And there were pretty much no other correlations that were statistically significant. So case head thickness and rim thickness, both correlated with weight. Uh, pocket depth didn't correlate with rim thickness. Pocket depth didn't correlate with case head thickness. Case head thickness, um, you know, didn't correlate with rim thickness. It was just those two correlations there with weight. And um, in total, the amount of variance accounted for, you know, by head thickness and rim thickness in weight was about 48.5%. So um, those two variables definitely impacted weight. Um, almost half of the variance is accounted for simply by measuring case head thickness and rim thickness. 
And uh, anyway, these are sort of the, the plots. Uh, if you know how to run correlations in Excel, uh, you can have it pull up graphs for you that, that graphically demonstrate the correlation. You can see here, it's what's called a positive correlation. So um, the higher the weight, the more case head thickness, which makes sense. I mean, if your case head is very thick, that's adding more weight. I mean, it's simple. Uh, but, you know, again, we wanted to run the stats to see if this is true. It shows up, yes, it's true. And uh, same thing when we were looking at rim thickness. Another positive correlation. Uh, not, not a huge correlation, but definitely one that's statistically significant. And again, roughly half of the percentage in the variance in uh, weight is accounted for in, uh, is accounted for by rim thickness and case head thickness. Okay, so you're probably wondering, you know, well, where does the rest of the variation and, and you know, weight coming from? Um, probably somewhere in the body here, maybe the thickness of the body and the thickness of the neck. Um, certainly, looking at case head thickness and rim thickness, we know that that accounts for half of the weight. Also, probably wondering what are the practical applications here? Um, well, I mean, in I did a series of tests um, on uh, brass weight, and what I found out was, kind of like I mentioned earlier in the video, that um, if you sort it by weight, it seems to me, well, at least from the results I, I got, that um, the heavier and the sort of average weight brass performed better than the lighter weight brass. Um, again, that, that could be that it, they were just more uniform. Um, and for whatever reason, the lighter brass was less uniform, had less case head thickness, less rim thickness. Um, not 100% sure what drove that result, but I do know that that was a statistically significant finding. And so what I do now, again, practically speaking, is I'll weight sort and I will call out the super light pieces and just use the sort of more average to heavier weight pieces. And that seems to have... Uh, I've been able to get a little more precision in that. Um, another practical application is case head thickness. And uh, I just started the test on this, so I have no, I don't have a comprehensive set of data or conclusions on it yet. But I did um, get one sample and saw a trend, actually. What I saw was that, um, you know, with case head thickness, the thicker ones, which basically would leave you less volume inside the case, tended to have higher velocities. So um, again, I did not collect a ton of data, so I was not able to sort of run the stats on it to see if they were statistically significant, but I just noted with the preliminary data that I took was that um, there was a, a trend. It, it, there was definitely what appeared to be a trend where the thicker the case head, the faster the velocity and I shot at 200 yards and I tracked each bullet knowing what the case head thickness was on them. And certainly the ones with faster velocity showed a higher point of impact than the ones that were sort of average weight or lower weight. So um, definitely some implications I think there for ballistics um, and precision too, because if, you know, you let's say you have one that's super thick, uh, you, let's say you get five shots in your group, right? You have one that's really thick, and then you have four that are really thin. Well, you might get that flyer. You may get a high flyer, um, and the, the high flyer may be the one with the really thick rim thickness because it's uh, pressuring up faster and, and uh, moving the bullet with more velocity, which typically ends up uh, to go higher in terms of point of impact on the target. So anyway, I am going to be exploring that a little more further here, but just wanted to put out a video showing, you know, well, looking at all of these sort of dimensions, this is how the variables, you know, relate to each other. And definitely weight has a, a correlation with uh, rim thickness and case head thickness. So um, we'll be doing more testing on this, uh, definitely looking at uh, case head thickness and seeing, you know, um, you know, how much of a factor that is, like I said, preliminarily, 
Uh, looks like it is, but I'll run, run the test repeatedly, get a lot more data, and then be able to run the stats on it to see if it's statistically significant. So stay tuned, and uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, uh, please join my Patreon page. We have a, a great community, a great learning community. Everybody is coming together and uh, working together to advance our knowledge of these things and see what factors are causing you know variances in groups making you know what what could be causing a group to get bigger what could be causing some vertical what could be you know causing different changes in ballistics things like that and so we're really getting into the nitty-gritty with that and looking at all kinds of different variables and um, it's just a great community we have we have collaborations with other patrons going on there uh, bench attic being one if you haven't tuned into his Patron page, Patreon page, please do. Um, he also has a YouTube, so check that out too. Um, and just a good, uh, just a good uh, <laughs> venue of uh, people who are all like-minded in terms of improving their precision and seeing, you know, what factors are causing error, what factors are causing flyers, what factors are, you know, affecting precision and ballistics. So really good group. Hope you can join. Take care.